Okay, we're starting to record, and now we want to go on to, uh, here we go. Let's sign ourselves on to, there we go. Hello, everybody. How are you? Everybody on Facebook, good to see you too. So anyway, good afternoon. How you doing? How's life? And we got tons of people, by the way, waiting to come on. Uh, so we should do it, okay? Oh, gee, more and more. Ooh, this is going to be a big day today. Got a lot of people. Uh, let me see here. Uh, we, oh, boy. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. First of all, well, let's wait till everybody kind of comes on here. Um, uh, let's uh, say hello to Charlie Wallace. Hello, Charlie. Hi. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. And uh, let me see here. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm going to put on my earphones. I try to do this thing without earphones now because it's so much nicer and easier. And uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, hello, hello to uh, uh, our old friend, uh, Charlene. How you doing tonight? Good. Today, not tonight. Today. <laughs> um, how you do? Oh, look, we got Mike Chisholm. Hi, Mike. Hey, everybody. How are you? Uh, and, oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> Francine Witt is here, and Andrew Deutsch is here, and Len LaFrisco is here, and John Ewing is here, and the lovely and attractive Edward Berger. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Oh, boy. Uh, you, yeah, that's wonderful. I love that. I love your voice. Your voice. Uh -huh. is Yours is the cartoon voice that launched a thousand ships. Uh -huh. <laughs> How you doing, John? Doing real well, Alex. Yes, and uh, are, are you you're wearing a cap there? That's a very nice cap. Oh yeah, that kind of hides my receding hairline. Well, you know something, y yeah. Uh, just be proud of it. <laughs> you know, uh, it's just uh, it. There you uh, go. Yeah. Yeah. And keep yourself cut up short on the sides. You know, <laughs> That's uh, cool. uh, uh, um, a good friend of mine who was a comic taught me that that was pro a pre what is it? Pro, uh, preemptive, preemptive baldness. In other words, if you cut the sides short and don't worry about how much you got on top, just get, I look better roll with it. Well, I would look better this way if I let my hair grow down to here, right? Absolutely. You know, that would be horrible. All you people would get rid of me and never call again. <laughs> so uh, how's everything up there in Canada? Uh, things up in Canada are, you know, copacetic, I think. Yeah? Is your uh, life going okay? Life's going okay. It was an emotional day yesterday. Um, <laughs> and so it was just being the one year with Rick and, and, and all that. So a bit of an emotional roller coaster and then had some good conversations with Steve Weiner and some other people. And then we found out at the end of the day that uh, Letterman director, Jerry Foley passed away. So, what? What? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love. Oh yeah. I'm sorry same, about that. On the same day as Shecky, that's amazing. I, yeah. But I mean, uh, Jerry is another one of the guys I really got to know there. He's and so I, good. He's such I a good love guy. Love Jerry. Love Jerry. Yeah. Um, I sorry to sorry to sorry to break well, that. Well, you news. certainly bummed the place out today. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Well, some of us saw it on his Facebook post already. So yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you wrote a big, nice long thing about Shecky yesterday. I haven't had time to read it, but Marjorie showed it to me. Did you read it, Marjorie? Yes. Yeah. You said it was very good. Yes. So, you know, I miss him. I miss him every day. If I hadn't read it, if you miss him, I miss him twice as much because, I, you know, I believe you. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, I was in contact with uh, Randy, um, who was Shecky's, I'd say, best friend. Okay. Uh, he once said to me, Yeah, she's my best friend. I said, Am I your second best friend? He said, Yeah. I said, I'll accept that. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, and he, uh, she, she wrote me a n nice note. She thought it was uh, the ninth, and I had to tell her I thought it was the tenth. Yeah. But uh, last night, Marjorie and I toasted uh, Shecky. Shecky. Yeah. 
It's it's been a year already. That's the amazing part about it. Yeah. You know. Uh, it was amazing what a presence he was here. You know, I mean, I yeah. never met the man, but well, he was I, he was all he was one of your friends. You know, he was here. He really was. He really just yes, yes. You know, and and that's uh, it's kind of it's kind of uh, it it. Uh, a day doesn't go by that it doesn't bother me, you know. Um, but Jerry Foley, my God, what did he die of? So um, a, a few days ago, he got into a skiing accident is what's being reported. And then he uh, succumbed to it. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah, those sports are really healthy, aren't they? <laughs> That's right. That's why I do not ski. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, uh, the last words I think of Sonny Bono were, I think that's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's like my old one, you, you know, who Isadora Duncan was famous dancer and stuff. And in, in the thirties, forties around in there. Yeah. And she died because she got in the car and she loved wearing these long scarves and the scarf got caught in the wheel. And choked her to death, right? So I always used to have a joke about Isadora Duncan's last words were, "I think there's, I think my scarf's caught in the." Yeah. Anyway, my humor. Hello, Marjorie. Hi, honey bunch. Marjorie of uh, 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 today was nice enough to join me to going to the hospital. Oh. Yes. And you okay. We Wait, wait, huh? Am I okay? You okay. Well, do I look like I'm dead yet? He's not yet. I don't think so. No. no, I have something, but it's you know. But Alex gets so worried about anything. Yeah. So I'm there just to eat. Hey, it. hey, when you go online and read like I did, that you know this thing gives you three months to live. Well, that's know? what I said. I said to the doctor, you know, he's going on the computer for everything. You know, so he knows more than the doctor knows. Well, the doctor wasn't completely dismissing my using the Internet. He said, just don't go. He said, go to the Internet for medical information. It's there. You went beyond. Wait a minute, but don't go into the chat rooms. You no. went beyond. Huh? You what went mean, beyond. What do you mean I went beyond? I got well, a you go to the chat I, room. Uh, about two weeks ago, I was Alex Bennett of uh, radio and uh, podcast announcer and today i'm alex bennett almost qualified surgeon i have to take the test <laughs> yeah. but uh no i she was very good to me by the way let me just say that you know that's why i love her uh and you know um but we went to the doctor uh because i had this thing where it kind of looked like i might have leukemia and i do have leukemia Chronic. I get uh, my violin out. <laughs> I take back what I said about you being so sympathetic. I'm just drumming along. No, so it turns out that I have a, chron a chronic, uh, I can't remember what it is, leukemia. And what this is, according to the doctor, the most common leukemia in America, and a leukemia that they just sit and watch, you know. I have another appointment in two weeks, uh, eight eight weeks to go test my platelets, which were low. But he said, we just keep an eye on it. He said, you, you, you're you probably going to go the rest of your life with it never bothering you or causing you problems. And, uh, you know, but we just keep an eye on it. And Marjorie loved the doctor. She just I did. The doctor was terrific. Yeah. But, but let me just tell you, prep prior to today, Alex has been on the computer morning, noon, and night going through all of this. Are you saying that I'm a neurotic human being? Is that the point you're trying to make here? I think I would, I people say, are probably I would, abundantly. I would say not abundant. only mildly, but acutely. Absolutely. They're abundantly aware of that. Aren't you, Lynn? <laughs> yes. See? Yeah, anyway. but you guys aren't living it. But the point I was going to make is we go to this uh, the, it's Mount Sinai and it's a, a cancer hospital, it's a cancer floor, or whatever. And uh, I'm telling you, 
it is so wasn't it depressing well it was so bland but it was also you know i think if somebody's dying of cancer they should there's you nothing should, there's nothing you should make their salty. life joyful when yeah. they go to the hospital and not dour you know exactly uh and i mean i walked out happy because i got pretty good news all the way around i have what i have but it's not anything terrible where's the violin oh jeez! I, I i take back what i said about her being so sympathetic for the last <laughs> couple of weeks alex when you went through your last bout did you go on the computer the same way uh for the uh, prostate cancer yeah not really. I was not as much because he didn't know there wasn't that much time between I, Dr. Well, I, I, yeah, Alex I, on the computer. I handled that better, and I'll tell you why. And he didn't get on the computer. The same reason why I'm going to handle this better now is because I then I knew what it was, right. and as long as I knew what it was, then we go about taking care of it, right? right. But uh, I didn't have, as you say, Marjorie, enough time. Number one, but secondly. It was just that, you know, I went, okay, let's fix this thing, you know, and we did. Uh, this thing, I this this has been going on and off for the last year. I don't know. So I, he's fessed about it and have gone on the well, I don't know if I told the, morning nor the night about it. Well, wait a minute. I don't know if I told these people in the past that so. that horrible hospital I went to, you know, did the blood tests and poked me five times without getting blood. And then, you know, the guy never got back to me with the results of the, of the, uh, of the blood test. Well, I decided to go get the blood tests last week. It's just so maybe I'd have them for this doctor. All right. And on the fifth page, it says diagnosis in big red letters. And then they name the kind of leukemia it is. This guy didn't so, give back. Excuse me, folks. I'm just kind of putting in my little, every once in a while, somebody like Alex reading something like that. No, I no. Actually, I, was, I was relieved at that because the diagnosis was the least of the leukemias. Okay. Oh, my God. Wait, let me finish. The, let me finish. The computers, this, the, hold the on a second. Here's the, the point. The printouts. Are you finished yet? No. <laughs> anyway. Uh, hey, listen, he was happy I printed that out for him. Yes, he was. Yeah. Um, uh, but it was, uh, um, this was on the fifth page of this report. And the guy never got back to me, never called me. A and year I, later. I said to this doctor, I said, if you got this report back and that was page five, what would you do? And he said, I'd call you, <laughs> you know. Tell you what we saw, what we found. He said, I wouldn't even wait for that. As soon as I get the whole report, I'd call you and tell you here's what, what's in the report. I said, never heard from the guy. Never heard from him. He said, where did you go? And I said, well, look, it says so on the top. Said, oh, that place. <laughs> yeah. He said, actually, the doctors there used to be good, but they got taken over by a corporation. No, no, but he said, and something happened. Some, he yeah, didn't he, tell us what. He said, well, he didn't, I don't think he knew what happened. It's just the, no, whole, said, nature, but the whole nature of the place changed. And the doctors just, I think what happens is a big corporation buys an uh, outfit like this. And then they go in and they say to the doctors, well, we want you to up your billable hours. You know, so you got to, they got to do everything they can to suck money out of you. And, um, um, that's the trouble when these corporations buy these places. But uh, anyway, so I'm I'm going to be okay. So nobody worry. He's alive and he's going to live. <laughs> God, Excellent. You you walked out of that place going that guy was terrific, and I'm glad you he feel was. better now, Alex. And he I'm was. happy you feel better. And now you're making me feel miserable. No, I'm glad you <laughs> found him. He's perfect for you. Yeah, he is. He's a nice guy. Very and, nice. And hates Trump. Hates Trump. <laughs> that endeared me to him. I said, I know you're kind of hedging your bets in what you're saying, because we were talking a little bit about politics. I said, but I want you to know there are two people here who absolutely find Trump disgusting. And then he just unleashed on Trump. 
what what did you think of Kimmel's line last night at the end of the Oscars? That wasn't oh, a line. Perfect. That was real. It was great. Oh, I know, but the line that says, "What are you doing up so late? Isn't it past your jail time?" <laughs> yeah. It was perfect. <laughs> that was perfect. Perfect. Yeah. perfect. What did you think of the Oscars last night? I thought it was I liked good. It. it was good. It was good. Yeah. Compared I mean, to other years, I thought it was great. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, to begin with, uh, Kimmel has learned his lessons from previous years. Like he doesn't run any little gimmicks or whatever during the show. And yeah. he's come to fully understand that the star of the show is not you. The star of the show is the Oscars, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even if everybody knows what's going to win, in most cases, you probably last night probably didn't predict best actress. But uh, uh, yeah. outside of that, yeah, you know, I, I, hmm? I actually kind of did only because I watched about five minutes of Poor Things the other day before I just got a little, um, it just like kind of freaked me out a little bit, you know. Yeah. But I but I realized that Emma Stone, it's a, it was a showy ro uh, role. Yeah. They love showy. The Oscars love showy. Love showy. Uh, showy. So it, if you could I be believe, like, did you like Poor Things? I only watched five minutes of it. I just, it just kind of, I found it fascinating. It, I thought it was beautifully like done. It was very surreal. Mm -hmm. how, about, was, how about this word, pretentious? Well, it was a little scary to me. So. Anybody else see Poor Things? Yeah, I did. Very pretentious. You did? What'd you think? Oh, me? Yeah. Uh, it was like, a, it arrested you to watch it. Um, yeah. I thought some of it was pornographic almost, but um, not that that bothers me, but I'm just saying it went a little long. It was hard to watch her as an actress being like robotic in her movements. You know, it was kind of tough to uh, embrace completely. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't that great a picture, you know. Um, but, uh, and, and Emma Stone, I didn't think she'd win because she'd already won one a couple of years ago. How, how often can she win? She's not that great. But you won again, and against a uh, Native American. They hate Indians. At the well, that was a great. That was a great role, but it wasn't like I said. It wasn't that showy, you know. Like Brendan it, Fraser. Like showy. Brendan yes. Fraser last year, he gets into a fat suit, and so he wins, which really annoyed me. So. <laughs> well, you know, here's here's the interesting thing that I've said about the Oscars. You want to win an Oscar? Do an impersonation of somebody. Exactly. Uh, there was there was a time there where five years running, I think all the best actor and actress categories were won by people who were doing an impression of somebody yeah. else. Yeah, well, yeah. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. There's an impression. Yep. You know. But Robert Downey Jr. He was doing an impression, but I I watched that movie only like maybe a month ago and i was like i bet you robert downey jr wins for that oh yeah yeah he's gonna he win it because he was, number, number he was one, so good in that role number one he's a good looking guy who allowed himself to look old you know that's for starters and he was good i mean i always think i've always thought that robert downey jr has always been a good actor oh yeah and and highly underrated as an actor yeah uh, but you know, his drug abuse got in the way, I guess, and yeah, exactly. made an opinion yeah. based on that. It did, yeah. But, I was super pumped when he won that because, I, like you said, I've always thought he was underrated. So. Well, having having gone to breakfast with him, uh, I was ha I had a vested interest. I, have I mentioned to you that I had breakfast with Robert Downey Jr. when when he was mm -hmm. nine years old? I was gonna say I thought you had breakfast with his dad. <laughs> yeah, I knew his dad, Robert Downey Sr. and I were good friends. And um um one morning we had breakfast at the brasserie. Marjorie knows where the brasserie is. And uh we were having breakfast and uh uh, uh, uh he brought his son along, Robert Downey Jr. So I, you know, I don't remember if, if I was nice enough to him that he'd remember me now, but you know. <laughs> I like that movie. He he had some some feelings, anti feelings about his father. I think mm. um, at but, the time. Yeah, but at least it was a good father. He brought him to breakfast. Yeah. So Andrew, how's everything in your neck of the woods? 
me, I'm I'm exhausted. I'm moving on Wednesday and I've been plumbing and putting up walls and electrical and home or office. Pardon? Home or office. Home, home. I'm downsizing. And I still we're moving we're moving on Wednesday. I still don't have a working toilet or a sink, but I'll have one by tomorrow. No. That is downsizing, I will have to say. <laughs> yeah, it's uh I I bought the house right across the street from my oldest daughter. Yeah. My wife wanted to live there and it was destroyed. I had to rent a jackhammer to get the water out of the basement. Wait a minute, why does <laughs> your wife want to move in across the street from her daughter? Cultural thing, she's Brazilian. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we got two grandkids across the street. So, yeah, a lot of times in in foreign yeah. countries, families live across the street from each other. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the house was a wreck, and uh, I got it real cheap. But cheap is expensive. So, <laughs> yeah, especially I had to the rewire. I, I I replace all the drain lines, all the water lines. The it's uh, and the guys that I hired to help me all have high fevers and can't come to work. And <laughs> yeah. So, I'm uh, basically solo, solo reno renovating a house. I just took a break to come say hi here. I'm going to head back over in a few minutes. Well, we're so glad that you you uh, have joined us, and so, but it does feel good with your presence. Yeah, it's uh, I haven't done heavy construction like this since I was really a little bit younger. I don't think I've ever done heavy construction. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, there's a thing known as um angie's list or whatever it is you yeah. get somebody to do whatever well who do who do we call we there's one of those Ghost, ghostbusters <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> we use one of those uh here and got ripped off once yeah uh, i we had somebody we're... fix a, a washing machine and it took him forever and he kept having to do new parts and he couldn't get the old parts out. The thing wound up costing us a thousand dollars. Oh, jeez. Well, I've, you know, some of my clients are home service companies, and um, I would never use anyone who's on Angie's list or home. Uh, all oh, of those really? companies are one company. And are and they really? Yeah, Home Advisor and Angie's List, I think, are the same same company. So they bid against wow. each other, and you, the, it, people that are on there are on there for a reason. Um, in the trades, if you're good, you don't need to be on that. Well, let's say I want to install my dishwasher. I just got to get, get a dishwasher and I want it installed. It's not hard to find somebody who can do that. Well, there's there's nothing to putting in a dishwasher. It well, takes, would you come to ours when it comes? Sure. <laughs> Buy me dinner, I'll put in your dishwasher. Would you trust Alex to install it? <laughs> listen, listen, dear. It's a water Darling. and a plug. Let's, let's talk about some of the things I've installed in this house. There's been pure genius on my part. Oh, you have, and I'm not saying no. Like when you open the closets, what happens in this house? I love it. I love it. Lights go on, don't they? <laughs> and these are very dark closets. And They've deep having... and big. Yeah. So what I did is I went on and got a bunch of these uh, lamps, you know, that you put in the driveway. When people walk past them, they go on. I Motion. Just, I just, I just. Do you want to see? The, you want to see my handiwork? Here's, what? here's the, the plumbing. The, the, I just put this up yesterday. Really? So those are all the water, the cold water lines and the hot water lines and, the filter for the drinking water. Yeah. That was my, that was my plumbing yesterday. You wow. did that? Yeah. Well, I'm impressed. That well, the, you I, can't see, but on the opposite side, it's the water heater. And yeah. I mean, if I had to do it, I could probably learn how to do it. I wouldn't anything, want you to do it. I'd rather hire somebody anything else. Anything you want to find out how to do, <laughs> right? Am I right? You can go on YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. This, yeah. Yep. If I hired a plumber to do this, it would have been about $8,000. And I did it myself on a Saturday and Sunday. Did you go on YouTube? No. No. He knows in, instinctively how to do it. Yeah, you just it's not it's not it's not rocket science. But uh now when I hear I get, uh, next week that you had to fix up a bunch of water damage in your house. <laughs> we don't talk about that, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it worked out it worked out pretty good. It's just the it's running them through all the different inside the walls and cavities and all that kind of stuff is 
It's like solving a puzzle. Yeah. But I also do the I can speak your language discount deal and get some labor. When I jackhammered the basement to put in the drain, mm -hmm. I hired guys to carry the buckets of rubble up up the stairs and the gravel and the cement down. So I wasn't doing the heavy stuff, but it's well, uh, good for you, Andrew. How old are you now, Andrew? Uh, this year I'll be 58. 58. Okay. You're still of that age where you've got the ability. You know, I've got a problem with myself is that I can't get up on a ladder or on a chair to do stuff because of my balance. Yeah. So, you know, so yeah. you get older, it's a little harder to do these things. And so what you do is you have to have enough money to be able to get people to do it for you. Yeah. Getting up on a ladder is no problem. It's the getting down thing that most people have. <laughs> Either really, really quick or, or <laughs> really quick. Yeah. I, I was never good with ladders anyway. I mean, I, I they scare me. You, know, yeah. you didn't even hard. play shoots and ladders you, as a kid. You two, I know uh, uh, Francine is going, yep. Yeah. 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 But, you know, it's the things that the labor market, the guys in the trades are, there's not as many of them and the, the prices are through the ceiling. And yeah. you get somebody out to do the only thing that I, I typically don't do myself are gas lines. I hired a guy to come in and do the gas lines for me because they go boom. Well, exactly. I, I yeah. set up this whole studio and the rat's nest that's under it. <laughs> yeah. but you, can't you can't prevent rat nests. Yeah. It's impossible. But, but tonight I'm going to finish the tiling and tomorrow I'll grout and put the toilet in the, <laughs> make the shower work. So we have. Would I be able to do that, Marjorie? I could grout. I, I I doubt it, Alex. What do you mean you doubt it? I to... grout. In fact, I have grouted in my life. All right. So you I, I said grout, not grouse. You... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was the word I was looking for. <laughs> it's all yours, Alex. No, I I put some grout in. It's all yours. You. It's definitely on your on your thing. Well, I fix stuff around here. No oh. one's saying you don't. Yeah, here's, you what, here's, how I, here's most mornings how I wake up. Alex, the toilet is is plugged. <laughs> or Alex, the TV isn't working. I mean, it's the first thing when I wake up. I'm in a fog. I don't know how to handle it. You know. Those are your chores. Yeah, but you know what you forget? You forget the prime rule of everything in electronics. And what is that prime rule, Marjorie? We start it. Turn it off and turn it back yeah. on again. Reboot. Yeah. In most cases, if you can't get something to work and you reboot, it will work. It's true. He's right on that. Yeah. Well, when That's you say reboot, you have to do it with a Punjabi accent. You must it, reboot. Oh, you must reboot. <laughs> yes, we shall reboot. Reboot, sir. Reboot the button with the thing. <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, rebooting is uh, very important. I even would say this, sometimes it gets all flummoxed up and you, you and this is a new machine you just reboot and it usually clears everything up we call it a boot in canada a boot? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. i don't know so, what that's a boot so uh, <laughs> you've been up to anything interesting uh uh mark mike mark um i mean lots of letterman podcast stuff which is good i love yeah. that um, just recorded with Al Chez, who was the trumpet player forever for, uh, for, for, for Paul. So that was really cool. We talked a lot about Rickles and how he took over the fanfare from, from Carson and, uh, and, and, and how he made it kind of his own. That I was, was kind of I was watching an old Letterman and, um, what's that? Paul did the funniest bit that I don't know how many people in the audience got. But he said, yes, sitting with the band tonight is Elia Kazan. <laughs> and what he's going to do uh, during the show is every now and then when we go to him, he'll name names. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so they, they, now let's go to uh, Elia Kazan. And the guy starts listing a bunch of names, names you never heard of, right? <laughs> now, I don't know how many people in the audience at that time got that joke. Mm -hmm. Uh, does anybody not get the joke? Who, huh? So I don't get the joke now. I don't either. Neither. Ilya Kazan was a, one of the greatest directors in the American theater and in film. 
uh, was one of the guys who, who ratted on people in the House and Un American Ex uh, Activity oh. Subcommittee so he mm -hmm. could keep working. Mm -hmm. And he was hated forever. And finally, I think it was 50 years later, they gave him an honorary Academy Award for his work in film, which, quite frankly, he deserved. But nobody wanted him to get it because of his ratting on these people. Uh, and so that was the joke. Ely Kazan sitting, and they got a guy who looked old enough to be Ely Kazan. And he just started naming names, you know, Alex <laughs> Bennett, whatever, you know. Yeah. But, uh, gee, I can't believe that the director of The Letterman Show is gone, Jerry Fulton. Yeah. That just, that just blows my mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, just That's really, really, it's really just really sad. What well, did know, he die from? Hitting a tree. Well, we uh, it was a ski accident of some sort. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Usually, what. a ski accident is hitting a tree. I mean, I can't think of many more accidents you can have from skiing. Oh, just falling and moguls. So there's lots of ways. Bumping your head, you know. Yeah. Falling out of the chair. A rock. <laughs> <Yeah>. a rock. <laughs> I think yeah. didn't Natasha Richardson isn't that how she died? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, she never yeah. recovered. And I think she could have lived through it if they got into her fast enough. Yeah, but, but they didn't. Uh, she was someplace where you know, very wow. remote. The ski resort. Yeah, the only thing you had to see coming to help you was a Saint Bernard. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um. But no, but she, uh, yeah, that was a sad thing. That that never had to happen. Yeah, you know, that was. I cried. I I love Natasha Richardson. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, she was terrific. She was terrific. But you know, and then there's Sonny Bono. Yeah, but he hit a tree, right? He, I think. He hit, yeah, he hit, he yeah. hit a tree, that yeah. I can say for sure. He hit a tree. Yeah. That that happens a lot, though. Does anybody here a skier? I was. I did for a long time. A lot of accidents that too. way, right? I mean, that's it's pretty pretty bad. It's easy to avoid a, a tree if your your reflexes are, you know. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. And I really trust your thing. reflexes. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> You know, I tried to ski once. They put me on some skis. I actually have a video of it somewhere. <laughs> and it's pretty pathetic. Pretty pathetic. But I um, um but I I always wanted to ski, but I just never, you know, it just took too much to learn it, too much time and uh, also it's a very expensive sport. You got to have the skis. You got to have the rack on the car. You got to have to get go to the ski lodge. You got to pay their fees. You got to go up on the ski lift. That's another fee. And then Alex, ski, that's true with any sport. And then you ski down the the slope and you hit a tree. Uh, cross country <laughs> skiing is nice. Cross country. Yeah, it's it's a nice alternative, you know. Because mm -hmm. I lived in Vermont for a while, and mm -hmm. I felt like it was the law. You had to learn how to ski because we're always around you skiing. So I finally, I finally, uh, you know, went out with some friends and we did cross country skiing, which is, you know, I mean, it's not like just, it's you know, not an alternative. It's totally two separate things. Yeah, but I, I mean, if, you, if you're feeling like you need to get out, um, and, you know, and do not an alternative. Skiing. Cross country sounds like a nice idea. It is nice. Yeah. To begin nice. with, there are no trees to hit. <laughs> yes, well, there, there are. are. Yeah, there there are. Yeah, but but you're go, you're on a on flat land, right? Yeah, you could do, go down a little hill every now and then. You know, it depends on where you are. Yeah, and then I could shit my pants because <laughs> that's what would happen. I know it. You know. Well, I certainly brought that to a screaming halt. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see here. What else is happening in this wonderful world of ours? We had the Academy oh, Awards. How about the response to the to the oh. the, the, <laughs> the president's speech. Oh my God, yes. I haven't seen someone audition for the middle school play in a long time. <laughs> I, oh I had God. never heard of her. She was no. on the she was on the short list for VP. Did you see Saturday Night Live's response? 
Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was Scarlett Johansson. That was Scarlett. Yeah. I didn't realize it, but it was Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. 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 Scarlett, Joseph's wife. But yeah, right. Yeah. I understand that the the sale of uh that color green dress is completely ended in the country. Every dress <laughs> stuck with, with back stuff backlog. Not oh, even okay. not even not even the 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 drag queens are gonna wear that color anymore. I, I like how <laughs> Carla Johansson made fun of her cross. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever sale. seen something that funny that yes, wasn't supposed to be in my life. I yeah, didn't see. I, I didn't I see it. I saw. I saw a few moments of it here and there, but uh, oh, you got to see here, the whole I hear, thing. I hear it was pathetic. Yeah. Now, my, my pathetic question is: cover it. What possessed the Republican National Committee? Yeah. Put that woman in there. Do you put somebody in there you hate and you just want them to ruin the <laughs> right. Usually they usually they put somebody that they want to feature, you know, that they yeah. want somebody yeah. yeah. always a rising yeah. star. Yeah. 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 Not a <laughs> maybe she was suggested by Trump for all we know. Yeah, it was probably because she's pretty. Yeah. That's right. The, the breathy delivery was wonderful. They wanted a rising <laughs> star, they got a they got a black hole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I walked away from the TV when she came on. I wasn't looking at it. And I heard this voice and I'm going, is there a 12 year old on TV? <laughs> right. These Americans are hurting. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, also the other thing is they uh, uh, put them on so much later than the actual State of the Union. Yeah. yeah. The Union is over at, uh, let's say, 10 30 let's just say arguably 10 30 yeah. and then uh there's a bunch of this that and the other thing so a half hour before that thing goes on it should go on yeah. immediately right after yeah. after I think the, it uh, used to uh, yeah I think, it, yeah it used to go on right after yeah. and the thing that's really funny though is that it was written before the speech and they had expected him to be the you know in the the stereotype yeah. of the, the doddering old fool and he, he came out and just kicked ass. Well, you know, and her course, speech you, didn't match. Yeah, you had Biden, who to begin with, it says, not, uh, what was it, nine o'clock, the speech starts, right? Yeah. Tick, 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 tick. He's not there yet. Tick, tick, tick. And finally, <laughs> at about, uh, about 15 minutes past the hour, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, the president of the United States. And I'm figuring, why did he take so long to get there? Is he trying to get the black vote? <laughs> <laughs> you realize the only person that laughed at that joke was the black guy in our audience. It's uh, the truth. What can I say? You know, he's, taking, he's taking selfies coming in and whatever. It seemed kind of yeah. silly. Yeah. I mean, he took forever to get to the stage. It did. Uh, he, he did a hell of a job. Oh, he did. He did. Uh, I thought he. I thought he. Uh, I thought he 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 did a, a good enough job to probably change some people's minds. Yeah, about his competency, yeah. especially for the fact that he would go off teleprompter to go after Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, or yeah. off teleprompter to say, "Hey, what you can't read?" Yeah, <laughs> she she's a disgrace. I mean, she's oh, just unbelievable. She, she, you know something? I've known women like that, and I stray away from them because they're crazy. Yeah, <laughs> she's from your neck of the woods, isn't she? Uh, 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 way north, way Mandy. north of where Mandy lives. Yeah, yeah. North. I know it's, that's the excuse, but she's still in Georgia. Yeah, she's a couple of <laughs> way, but my favorite. Well, I shouldn't say favor, but to me, the best part with the Marjorie Taylor Greene was when he was walking in and all the people that want to be seen with the president, you know, of course, she was down there, obviously wanting to be seen with him. But his look on his face, like when he saw her, he was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Break, breaking, the hell? breaking the law, wearing campaign clothing to a exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, wonder, against... I wonder why the Speaker of the House has to be in back of him and the Vice President of the United States. For our entertainment. Because she's cheering him on, standing right. up, yeah. applauding. And what's his name? Je I can't remember. Johnson. Mike. Johnson. Mike Johnson is sitting there going. Rolling yeah. his eyes. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. 
just you know just shut the fuck up just be respectful and just watch the speech and if you don't want to listen to it if it's that boring that you have to go <laughs> then don't sit in back of him yeah but the I, justices didn't show up clarence thomas and, yeah i wondered about that yeah, yeah. clarence nobody thomas. nobody paid him to be there but george, <laughs> santo, george santo showed up <laughs> Yeah, yeah, George Santa. Well, he can show up for the rest of his life. And you know, he's running again. He's decided to run again. Yeah, I decided to run. Oh, really? Yeah. In the same district? No. Uh, no. So part of the whole, another whole branch of the government didn't show up. The ones that are supposed to be completely impartial. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Yep. Yeah, but, uh, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Oh. Uh, it was uh, the uh, justices. I I didn't see him take down the justices, but I hear he sat there and you know looked down at him and went. He yeah. made one comment to him. Yeah, he did. He did. About yeah. what? Yeah. About what? I think Roe v. Wade. Yeah, Roe yeah, yeah, no versus Wade. Yeah. yeah, he commented on that. Yeah. Yeah. Usually you don't do that because they're there to suffer the slings and arrows of. Whatever the president says, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, the but, new, the new he, Biden ad is good too. If you get a chance to see it, the new Biden ad was it? Yeah. Uh, was it? It's just an accomplishment after accomplishment, and then at the end, there's like a little improv thing where he he, he makes a funny comment. It's worth watching. I don't mm -hmm. want to ruin it for you. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, and he he also did a pretty good job of saying like, you know, it's no secret I'm old. You know, things like that. You know, he. I think he did a, a good job of it, what I saw of it. I had to get ready to go on the show that night, but uh, I thought he was terrific. I thought he was just uh, acquitted himself very well. Yeah. Uh, and I think there's a pretty good chance he's going to beat Trump. I do too. And I, <laughs> I say that because what people say before they get into the, uh, into the voting booth and what they do when they, once they get in there and are confronted with the two choices. Mm-hmm is a completely different matter. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that as the race goes on, I think what they've said for Trump to do, I, here we are talking politics, but what they told uh, Biden to do is just go after Trump all the time. Yeah. It, it will drive him nuts. You and use the word loser Trump. with him and that's the end. I mean, he goes <laughs> nuts. Yeah. Do <laughs> the, any the real of those things. And you can actually push him into a situation where he may do something that hurts his campaign. You know, he just says something's wrong. Yeah, the real the real math though looks like Biden's way ahead because all the a uh, bunch of factors in terms of the independence and where they're leaning. But the Nikki Haley voters, uh, something like sixty percent of them won't vote yeah. for Trump. Not yeah. vote for Trump. <laughs> they'll either stay home or they'll vote Biden, hold their nose. I think they'll Biden. stay home. Is what the problem is for Trump. They're not going to vote at all. I know uh, several that are going to vote for Biden. Like, I bet we August. see a very low turnout rate this year. Reason, don't so. you, you don't think so? No. I'm no. thinking that people are just, you know, this is like a rerun. But this well, we're by November, see... anyway, people will be exhausted. As, yeah. as yeah. the women, how yeah. many, I think how many a lot of women are going to turn are out, yeah. come out and vote this time that, that sometimes don't? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ener energized. I mean, that whole IVF de debacle. Yeah. Yeah. That was year years ago, Alex, when I, I, I want to say it was the late eighties, early nineties. Mm -hmm. I called Rush Limbaugh's show and thanked him for, you know, all the great things he was doing. And, uh, and then said, but I'm a little upset because my, uh, my wife and I were going to, going to do IVF, but, uh, I didn't want to abort all those embryos. So thank, thank you for helping me not have children. That was back before he was recording the calls. I got on the air. He called me like seven different names. And, and, and it was, I mean, I completely threw his show off the oh, wow. off, off track that day. What's well, nice is you can stop off in uh, in Alabama and pick up a dozen eggs and you know, use the carpool lane. So that, that works out <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm going to go make some embryos so I can get some tax deductions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just got to find some eggs. Yep. We're old. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. 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 Ah, wow. It's amazing. It's just uh, it's so much fun what's going on. It just, it's no end of entertainment now. 
it's going to be hard not to talk about politics for the next nine months. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Well, as long as we keep it light. Right. Yeah. You know? uh, Agreed. The, yeah. The thing is that it's 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 getting to the point where it is very difficult to even turn on the news. Mm -hmm. You know, and what's happening is we have here. Do you realize how many months is it till the election? It's uh, eight October. Yeah, about uh, almost eight eight months. Months. about eight months. Yeah, yeah. Uh, already we have the two people that are running. Yeah, yeah. already. Yeah, I mean, and then so how long? And then they're they're campaigning now. Yep. How much, I mean, we have to put up with this for nine months. At the end of nine months, people are going to be ready to stick a gun in their mouth. They're already ready to stick a gun. Well, isn't there some countries that limit it to, is it 90 days or 60 well, no, days? But what happens yeah. is, the, the, the problem Great, is, I've said yeah. this over Canada. and over again. I know that Charlie knows I harp on this constantly. The idea of primaries. Mm. It, it's only since 1932 that we've had a major primary system. It's mm. not codified into the uh, into the Constitution. There's nothing in the Constitution about primaries. For years, they were something that parties did occasionally to find out what people thought about the various candidates. But then they went to the convention and they fought it out. And they, you know, they they and then one people would yell with the other people, and they'd go into caucuses, and then they'd fight, and then they'd get the, more votes from these people than these people, and eventually they'd come out with their standard bearer, who would then run. Mm -hmm. There were no primaries, and the primaries is what causes this, because if you didn't have the primaries and you had to wait the uh, conventions, they're about three months from the election. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. so you you hold you 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 find out who the two candidates are, which you pick by up as a party in at the conventions. You send them out for three months, and that's it. This yeah. doesn't go on starting the day after the next election. Yeah. You know, and that's why Americans are bored. Yeah. And the and the Trump folks are already saying that this election is being fixed and they have evidence and they're they're throwing shade. <laughs> so even after even of after course. Biden wins again, they're gonna yeah, try you know, to pull so the same line. shit again. Yeah. They're, every, they're getting a head start. They're every Republican who <laughs> yeah. doesn't win in various right. elections always yeah. starts yelling fraud. Yeah. Right. I mean, prove it. Don't just say it, prove it. You know, so it's getting to be, you know what it is? I told Marjorie, I said, the problem is it's turned out to be a major, major problem. Because what you've got going on here is one big reality show. And that's mm -hmm. all, because it's on television, that's how America perce perceives it. Except there, there's no, no winner in this one, I'm afraid. And now, to see if he has trouble where he lives this way, let's go now to our friend in Canada. <laughs> What happens over there? You have stuff like this too. Is it is it getting is it? Getting no, we, well, we've got the polarization is happening up here. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's as intense as it is down there, but but um, no, we have uh, the way that our system works because it's a par parliamentary system, right? Uh -huh. You announce you you elect your representative who goes to Ottawa, and the party with the most representatives that were elected, their leader becomes the prime minister, right? So. But they do have it. I think it is a 90 day deal when they call an election, then then uh, there's a 90 day campaign. So yeah. it's but boy, our media, I mean, we get the media that we get up here, uh, uh, the vast majority of it's American. So we're on this ride with you guys. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's crazy watching um, both narratives that are revealing themselves to be perfectly frank, neither of which look very appealing to me. <laughs> I don't know. I know. But um, but but. How can people possibly find anything redemptive in Donald Trump? Yeah. You know, I, I, I can see that you don't like Biden, but come on. You know, I have so many friends that are well educated and they are absolutely Trump a hundred percent. When I say anything against them, they're like, Well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? How can you not? They say exactly the same thing that we're saying. How could we not see 
the good in that man. And it's like, wait, what? Because <laughs> I have the court documents. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. I, I, I had lunch with a woman, the one I, when I was down in Tennessee, we met um, uh, for a couple of hours. Well educated, college, you know, whatever, really good. And I started saying something. And she says, Well, you know, Joe Biden's dead, right? I go, What? She says, Oh, he's been dead for years. This is a, an imposter. And I'm just going, Oh my God, you've got to be kidding me. And she was serious. How do you come up wow. with these theories? You really got to work overtime to get these kind of theories. And by the way, you may notice our political discussion here is very positive and nice and light. You know, we're not arguing among each other about who's right yeah. or wrong and, oh, listen to that. But, I mean, the fact is that, that uh, I mean, are we a laughing stock up in Canada? <laughs> I think it depends on the audience. Um, I don't think I don't think you're a laughing stock. I think that it's more empathy than anything. It's like, oh, man, it's, it seems so broken. And uh, the I polarization like is such that... that, that yeah nothing seems to be able to get done without tribing up and but i mean like i say that's that's happening up here too right like that's that's uh we're seeing a lot less compromise and a lot more you know competitive um nature and and I'll tell you something. it's a very positive thing because this is the first time we've ever cared what a person from canada thought about us yeah i'm pretty so. i'm pretty uh <laughs> i'm pretty grateful for that that's pretty great <laughs> Let this We're gonna make Canada great again. Yeah. People in Canada have thoughts. <laughs> I didn't know people in Canada had thoughts about us. <laughs> but uh anyway, so uh and down in uh down in Georgia, everything fine down there? Or is yeah. uh, as I should uh, say, y'all was... okay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How are y'all? Yeah, y'all well, fine. Me all well, your heart. <laughs> I'm, I'm just if it's looking. y'all why isn't it meal when i talk about me <laughs> <laughs> actually what i love i love y'all i think that it, yeah. it it's one of those terms that we have in american language that really serves a very good function you know i i, I don't think anybody would go you all you know what about when you can add to it and say all y'all Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We is say that, that a lot. Is that the equivalent in Brooklyn well, when you say, huh? Oh, sorry. Is no, that the equivalent in Brooklyn when you say use guys? <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> right. I'll tell you something. When I was uh, living in Texas, uh, they uh, they would call, go to women and talk about a woman as Ms. So and so. And uh, I one time asked somebody, where does that Ms. come from? And they said, well, because sometimes you don't know whether a woman is married or not married. So if you go Ms., you're not going to be wrong. And later on, a couple of years later, a woman by the name of Gloria Steinem says, yep. hey, we're going to call it Ms. And she acted like it was her own ability to come up with a great term. And I went, the Southerners have been using it forever. Well, they spelled it M-I-Z was how it yeah. was kind of spelled if you wrote it. So I, you know, I kind of went, you know, that that that's brilliant. Uh, so Southern speak is, I think, somebody said once that it's the purest form of English in America. Uh, that's a very pure dialect. I mean, sometimes it gets too thick and you can't understand what the hell they're saying. But Yeah. 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 I'm still caught up on the fact that the first shot of the pronoun war was Ms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. Uh, did you notice, Mandy, today, are you, are you dressed up like a professional? <laughs> Do I do? Am I not normally dressed professionally? Uh -huh. well, sometimes, sometimes you're yeah, a little right. you're summery and things like that, you know. But, but you've got a cold again. You got, got on a business jacket and you've got it, the, you know, no. It's a sweater with just a collared shirt on. Sweater? Yeah, it's a sweater. Yeah. I hate. I hate. I hate Zoom. You can't tell what people are wearing. <laughs> Yeah, I was all ready to wear something springy, but it got chilly again. You kind of look very businesslike that way. You look like you were wearing a jacket, a black jacket. No, just a sweater. How's how, how's tax time turning out? It's it's getting better. It's getting better. Now that's taxes for your company, right? 
Yes, just there's I the company I work for has many different divisions, so we have to send lots of files to the CPA for them to do lots of tax returns. So. Oh, okay. And uh, what, what, they get a tax return, do they? Yeah, they just do tax returns, and then they send back your, you know, here's the tax return, and here's your authorization. You have to sign for us to file it for you. You know no, how you I... sign. You know how you sign your. Uh, what is it? The eighty five seven. Now, whatever that form is that you sign to yeah. um, authorize, authorize them to submit it electronically. Well, we, we know it's a rough time of year for you. It's just, yeah, it's just busy all the time and, anyway. And, and let <laughs> me also ask our good friend, uh, John, um, how's everything in Nevada? Well, for me, everything's real good. Um, my daughter just had a son, my second grandchild. So mm. I was pretty stoked to hold that innocent little life <laughs> i'm not trying to be profound but for me that yeah, married, you know. I, i've been told i mean because i've never been a grandfather i've never even been a father that i know of. <laughs> uh, and uh, as a as i've never been a grandfather but i hear being a grandfather is better than being a father it absolutely is because you can you can dote over the kids you can hug them and kiss them and play with them and do everything like that. And then when it's all over, they go home. Yeah. <laughs> and the That's daughter likes to sugar them up. What? Get even with your yeah. kids. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say, John? No, I was just saying it's a relief for them too when we take the child, you know, to give them some slack. So, uh, but for me, it's just joy because she's pretty bright. I say it's prejudicially, yeah. uh, you know, so it's just, it's a good feel. So Novato still Novato. Uh, we've had continual rain, but the hills are looking emerald green, like you probably remember them. Marin County's gorgeous during the rain. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's going to be in the seventies and eighties later this week, so I'm looking forward to that. Really, yeah. it's going to be into the forties uh, here, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it right now? Wait a minute. What is it right now? It's uh, uh, fifty degrees. Oh, it's not bad, Marjorie. Well, let's go out for a walk. I'm windy. Here. We and had, windy. And windy. We had four windy. inches of snow yesterday, and today wow. it's 50 degrees and it's all melted. Huh. Should yeah. it be pretty decent weather in April? Because that's when I'm coming back to New York. April, well, it gets very nice. Very, it's like, it'll you know. be better it, than March. Let's put some, it that way. There are April showers, you know. That, that's the there's old. April snow also. No, well, they don't tell her that. She's coming in <laughs> April. Tell her it's going to be wonderful when she gets here. It's going to be sunny. I, I, actually, April is a very nice month for New York. Most I'm coming middle, like the 18th. So are you going to come see us? Well, I want to. I'm coming with my sister. And we're only coming, well, we're coming Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I won't be there on a Monday. Going mm -hmm. home Sunday night. Yeah. But I'm going to see if I can. Well, if you can, we'd love to see you. you know? Yes. Uh, but we're, we're looking at hotels finally. I think we're going to stay like in Chelsea. Oh, okay. You'll be there just in time to put in his dishwasher, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, and be sure to bring your sister with you, you know, I mean. I, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, she, but that it was a different trip. We were still going to see Mackenzie, my daughter, but my sister's going with me this time. Oh, good. Well, you know, you're welcome. You don't have to, don't feel pressured to because. Okay. I, I I usually never tell people when I'm going into a town that everybody lives in uh, because I don't want to have to make appointments to see them. Yeah. And then if I want to see them, I can make the appointment. Mm. Yeah. And nobody else is going to be bothered by that. You know. Yeah. Well, we're going you know, to so excited. We're going to see the Neil Diamond um Broadway show. Oh really? Yeah. Marjorie hasn't seen that yet, but the the dirty little sin of Marjorie Miller. Is that she was a, she had to admit to me once that she was a big fan of Neil Diamond. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Apparently, it's, secret. it's my dad was a huge fan, so we kind of grew up on his music. So my sister got the tickets, but apparently it's gonna start touring. It was like we're gonna see one of the last shows. It's, it's closing down, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um 
So is he, if you've seen him recently. <laughs> <laughs> be quiet i love neil diamond i saw him I love I neil diamond too and i i love i love taylor swift right uh right <laughs> right right like i'm as soon as we're off here i'm going on to disney plus and watching her concert yes. movie with yeah. four more songs wow yes, four more songs <laughs> So I think Charlie wants to watch that with you. Are you, are you <laughs> yeah, I want to see it too. Yeah, well, I, I would watch it with Charlie, but I don't want somebody next to me masturbating. So <laughs> <laughs> again, <Wow. laughs> hey, it's uh, you, five o'clock you know, here at Nice. You know how to end the show, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I do happy, know. It's a happy end. It's a happy uh, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, you're the best. Yeah. <laughs> you really are, Andrew. Hey, Charlie, good talking to you again today. Nice having you here. Only black guy it laughed at my joke. <laughs> Marjorie, when I told her, her, went, that's in bad taste. I said, no, it's not. Your best friend, Teresa, is black, and she's always late. <laughs> it's, it's the truth, right, Charlie? It's yeah. the not a terrible thing. This is black standard time, man. right? It's black, <laughs> black standard time. Uh, I'll also thank you so much to uh, 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 Charlene for being here because we love having her here. Uh, oh, hey, Mark, Mike, Mark, Mike. Great having you here. Peace and love, everybody. Yeah, maybe nobody we know will die in the next week. Yeah. Let's know? hope. Oh, please, God, why'd you say that? I, 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 the other day, I started in my mind making a list of all these people I've known recently, recently and in the past, who are dead now. Because if you live to be eighty-four, the downside is there are a lot of people dying around you. Well, I think I told you the story about how my mom just said that she said all the last of her group of friends has passed away. She doesn't want to be the last one. Well, was, yeah. you, you know, the, the good, but people are dying around you, and. uh uh, that's pretty gets pretty depressing after a while, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, I I was going to make a list of them, and then finally at the end of that list, put it up on Facebook, and just the last line would be, "So how come I'm still here?" <laughs> you know, I mean, don't only the good die young. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, if I could throw one thing in there before I know we're over time. Um, okay. Do you think there was ever any consideration of putting Shecky in the in memoriam on the Oscars? No. Okay. No. As a historian? No. No, he wouldn't, he wouldn't qualify. That. He really wouldn't qualify. To begin gotcha. with, I don't think he was a member of the Academy at all. Oh, yeah. I see. And, okay. and I think these are basically members of the Academy. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I want to just say before we go, you know what was terrible about the in memoriam yesterday? Didn't see any of them. You could yeah. they, they had the camera back so far you couldn't read them, especially yeah, the okay. couple who were important. Yeah, they, they were. It was just terrible. the dancing and singing in front of just all that. Just run yeah. the in memoriam reel. Just run yeah. it. You know. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was terrible. I really think they should redo it and rerun it or something, somewhere, or put it yeah. online. Well, and, uh, in the bottom left corner, it did say if you want to watch the whole thing, go to yeah. YouTube or something. Yeah. Yeah, but I bet you're gonna have to see all that dancing going on and have a hard time reading. It. Uh, yeah. 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 That that was terrible. Yeah. Was terrible. It was, it was disrespectful. Yeah. That's the best way to put it. Well, anyway, thank you, Mike. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you to uh, uh, Francine. Once again, she's become a regular. Let's hear it for our folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Andrew, the, those aren't your fingers, are they? Uh, uh, Andrew Deutsch, thank you for being here today and, uh, and, and exposing us to your levity. Uh, uh, Len LaFrisco and the wallpaper. Thank you. <laughs> You're always in the same room. Uh, yeah, uh, I need to pick. I'll pick a new room when the weather gets better. I'll sit outside. <laughs> John Ewing, great having you here. Great that you are now a regular. Love having you. Uh, Marjorie, thank you. thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for going to the hospital with me and then not caring enough to be nice to me about it afterwards. Anyway. Anytime, my love. Um, and I love you. I love you. I love you, honey. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, you don't want to watch two old people kiss, huh? I can look in the mirror and do that. Do you think you don't want to watch two old people kiss? Imagine what it's like for me. <laughs> <laughs> And finally, a thank you very much to, uh, of course, uh, uh, Mandy O'Brien. Uh, always good having you here, kiddo. And uh, let me see here. Oh, yes, we have. We can't forget him. He signs us off, ladies and gentlemen. The uh, one and only uh, Edward Berger, who signs us off by saying, That's all, folks. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>